Uh, good afternoon. I am presenting my Vita 650 final project <clears throat> entitled Optimizing Supply Chain Procurement and Warehousing for mRNA Vaccine Buffers at BioShield. So my presentation overview, um, I'll talk a little bit about the company background and their current business situation. I'll describe the problems, identify the project goals, <clears throat> review the approach and methodology, then I'll shift into the data collection and analysis, share my results and conclusions and the impact of this project, and also predict some future research possibilities um, <clears throat> for subsequent um, students or employees at this company. So BioShield is a messenger RNA <clears throat> vaccine contract development and manufacturing organization, or what's referred to as a CDMO. Um, <clears throat> They manufacture messenger RNA vaccines for phase one clinical trials, and the company was founded in early 2020. BioShield is a unique organization because they have a platform manufacturing process. So what that means is basically <clears throat> all the materials are the same for each messenger RNA vaccine program, except for the vaccine specific nucleic acid sequence. So, <clears throat> The interesting thing about this strategy is it allows for very clear um, forecasting of materials that will be needed to manufacture the vaccine, um, which <clears throat> primes the organization for very strong vendor relationships um, and management. The type of vaccines they manufacture include prophylactic vaccines. So these would be vaccines like HIV, COVID, influenza <clears throat> and other prophylactics. So prophylactic is a word that means preventative. So um, if you've ever had a flu vaccine or a COVID vaccine, then you've taken what's referred to as a prophylactic vaccines. They also manufacture therapeutic vaccines. So therapeutic vaccines are vaccines designed to treat disorders. So that would include things like HPV, which stands for human papillomavirus or certain types of cancers, which are <clears throat> more in the emerging uh, marketplace for vaccine development. Currently, BioShield's business situation is they're a, <clears throat> a growing startup company with a proprietary scalable vaccine development process and platform, as I described earlier. And <clears throat> um, historically, they've been project team specific. So basically what that meant is BioShield <clears throat> would assign various team members to a project and <clears throat> those projects, those project teams would handle ordering all the materials they would also schedule all the activities. And um, this <clears throat> is what's referred to as a decentralized approach. So again, each team would contact vendors, would order materials, um, would get quotes, et cetera. And that was a fine approach when the company was small, but um, due to rapid growth, BioShoot has outgrown this very rudimentary vendor management strategy, um, <clears throat> supply chain procurement and warehousing processes. And I'll talk a little bit more about how this decentralized approach led to some problems in subsequent slides. So um, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, because the organization did not have a centralized vendor management system or VMS or a centralized supply chain management system or SMS, um, they kind of had basically siloed <clears throat> business processes, um, which led to again, some problems so BioShield, again, does not have a <clears throat> centralized procurement warehouse or inventory management system in place. Additionally, <clears throat> because of this, there's not a clear picture of their future materials needs, especially in, in the area of buffers, which are rather expensive for the different manufacturing campaigns. And so <clears throat> what they've asked me to do is come in and kind of clean this up and um, put in place better business practices and strategies um, I kind of already alluded to the idea of <clears throat> putting in place a vendor management system as well as a supply chain management system or strategy. Um, they're hoping that by maintaining or establishing <clears throat> better vendor relationships that they can reduce the total cost of goods ownership, which of course would increase profitability per program and for the organization overall. Additionally, um, <clears throat> by putting in place a vendor management system where they have primary and secondary vendors for all their materials, again, specifically focusing on buffers for this project, they would have reduced risk in their supply chain um, and also more transparency about <clears throat> the materials that are being used to make the buffers 
and I'll talk a little bit more about the regulatory components um, necessary for vaccine development and going into phase one clinical trials throughout the presentation. Further, they hope to optimize their warehouse and inventory management system using a high density storage area as well <clears throat> as a FDA approved good manufacturing practices approved inventory management software tool uh, that's going to be called instant GMP. And uh, lastly, they want to improve operational efficiencies and kind of just robust, <clears throat> make the vendor relationships more robust using forecast modeling so they can talk to the vendors about upcoming programs, place orders early, and <clears throat> let the vendors know about what types and how many buffers they'll be needing for the upcoming programs um, in future fiscal years and future quarters. So the approach, um, <clears throat> again, we're gonna put into place a vendor management system, specifically, again, in this case, focused on buffers and establish a primary and secondary vendor relationships. <clears throat> the, um, the new um, buffer management system that we've collaborated with and built a relationship with is called Boston Bioproducts and the prior incumbent um, vendor company for buffers was called Intermountain Life Sciences, which is now part of Cytiva. So <clears throat> by having both of these companies in place, we can uh, better manage the supply chain <clears throat> and um, also sort of give better competitive prices and better um, understanding of the supply chain for the materials that are going into the buffers, which is again, a big deal for making drug products when residual components can be um, put into the vaccine if they're present in the initial inputs and that can be dangerous and reduce safety. <clears throat> so um, having a vendor management system in place around buffers and, and all materials really also improves the safety of any vaccine that would be going into phase one clinical trials. Um, and again, by putting in place a forecasting model, this will help facilitate what's referred to as just-in-time delivery of buffers. So if we know with the vendor when we need buffers to be delivered, we can place orders early, have them manufactured, as the campaigns are nearing in their <clears throat> time on the calendar and have buffers delivered that are um, have long have long expiry dates as well. And so that's another <clears throat> variable that needed to be managed here is expiration dates on things. So it's not just sufficient to forecast and place orders years in advance, rather the vendor relationship needs to be such that the, um, the vendor knows what buffers we need and when we need them so that when the orders are placed, the, the buffers are manufactured and delivered in such a time that <clears throat> provides for meaningful expiry dates, such that buffers aren't expiring um, prior to runs taking place. Number two, we're gonna upfit BioShield storage and warehousing space with a high density rack system and bin system. And I'll show you some pictures of how that <clears throat> looked before and after in the results section of the presentation. Third, we're going to install an inventory management software tool called Instant GMP. Instant GMP supports centralized procurement and inventory management. It also helps to manage <clears throat> the materials, um, giving insights on when um, products or materials are being depleted. And <clears throat> this also circles into the quality management system necessary um, for FDA approval and release of uh, drug products. Lastly, evaluating and deploying a statistical forecasting model for buffer procurement. So I'm gonna analyze three different um, statistical forecasting models, the simple moving average model, the simple linear regression model, and the simple exponential smoothing model. And based on the statistical results of these models, we'll choose the best um, forecasting tool to use moving forward for BioShield's um, buffer forecasting needs. So um, as part of putting in the vendor management system, I needed to basically identify the list of buffers necessary um, for manufacturing of a messenger RNA vaccine. And so <clears throat> basically that's a pretty straightforward process of just getting the names of all the different buffers from BioShield. Um, again, they have a platform process, so the buffers don't change on any given campaign. It's always the same number of buffers. It's always the same volumes that need to be ordered, the same types, et cetera, <clears throat> same formulations. And so what you're looking at here are the SKU numbers. So this is the BioShield material number. So this is the material ID number. MAT is short for material. And then the list of numerical <clears throat> codes. So this is the in-house SKU. 
Um, when I talked to BioShield, they based and, and shared within the different buffers, they came back with their own SKU numbers, and so those are in the table as well. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the incumbent <clears throat> Intermountain also has SKU numbers. So we have three different identifiers for these different buffers, and here are the different buffer names. So um, just kind of a quick overview here. This is a one molar sodium carbonate buffer that's being delivered in the size of a 10 liter plastic bottle. You can see here, this is a 50% uh, glucose buffer coming in again, a 10 liter plastic bottle, um, various other buffers, tris buffers, um, ethanol, acetone, sodium hydroxide for cleaning things, citrate buffers, and then a PBS buffer is a phosphate saline solution. And so <clears throat> the first part of the implementation of the vendor management system is to basically gather up all the buffer information, get the SKU numbers and catalog numbers established, the volumes necessary, and so on. And <clears throat> from there, we can um, start to look at the various different forecasting um, information. So I basically have a table here showing all of the different months that BioShield has been in operation and how many messenger RNA programs they had in each each month. And there's two uh, columns here. So there's month from April to April 2020 to March of 2020. And then the second group, we have April through March of 2024. And <clears throat> you can see basically over time that the number of campaigns um, or the number of messenger RNA vaccine programs that BioShield was able to manufacture has um, basically looks like there's an increasing trend over time. So the organization clearly shows growth from its inception through 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 the current period. Um, so on the y-axis here, we have the messenger RNA programs or manufacturing campaigns. And on the x-axis, we have the time. <clears throat> and again, just by visually observing the graph data, we can see that it looks like there's some sort of relationship between the time um, that the company's been operating and the number of campaigns. So um, evaluating the simple moving average model, which is shown here, blue is the number of actual campaigns and the orange line shows the two month smooth model. Um, <clears throat> this model provided an absolute mean error of around 16%. And so this model predicts um, roughly 84% of the data. And um, so this is a pretty good start and we'll kind of look at some other models here as we move forward. This is the simple linear regression model. The regression line is shown here overlaid on the, again, the original data. The R square value here is uh, 0.847. So if we round this equation shown here, explains 85% of the variance in the data. And um, the equation is statistically significant with a p-value of less than 0.001. So <clears throat> based on this p-value, we can reject the null hypothesis and basically land on the idea that there is a relationship between the number of programs or, again, the buffers that will be needed to be ordered and time. And um, here you can see the other uh, statistical uh, readouts here. Finally, <clears throat> we evaluated or I evaluated the simple exponential smoothing model. And again, using Microsoft Excel, we're able to not only graph just the um, existing historical data, but use the simple exponential smoothing to predict or forecast out um, any growth in, in campaigns or, again, the need for buffers in this case. And here <clears throat> we got a mean absolute error of around 12 percent. And so the um, simple exponential smoothing, this should be an E here, forecasts 88% of the data. And um, if we compare the, oh, can't go back, the three models, then we can see that the simple exponential smoothing model is the best. Um, so transitioning over to results now. So basically, um, working with BioShield, or sorry, working with um, Boston Bioproducts, I was able to negotiate some cost savings for the buffers. And so um, building off of the original buffer table from the earlier slides, you can see the SKU numbers here. So this is, again, the BioShield SKU and the names of the different buffers. And what I'm showing here is the price difference between the quota price between Boston Bioproducts 
and the incumbent vendor Intermountain. And so each uh, buffer's price difference is shown here. So um, reading this, basically the cost of the one molar sodium carbonate buffer at um, Boston Bioproducts is $191.40 less than the same buffer provided by Intermountain. And um, we need one 50 liter drum of <clears throat> this material per manufacturing campaign. And so the total cost saved for a campaign for this particular buffer is $191. As we go down the list, you can see where in cases of additionally, um, the quantity needed <clears throat> is more, then obviously the savings per manufacturing campaign would be increased. And you can kind of see here in the bottom corner that per manufacturing campaign, by purchasing all of the buffers at Boston Bioproducts, we um, will save approximately $14,000 per manufacturing campaign. And so <clears throat> basically by establishing a relationship with Boston Bioproducts, which is a smaller um, family owned organization located in Boston, um, we're able to save money compared to working with the much larger organization called Intermountain. And as I mentioned earlier, they were recently acquired by Cytiva. And so Cytiva and Intermountain are very large manufacturing companies that provide materials <clears throat> to, um, you know, the global um, biotech um, sector, including basic research and other manufacturers. So you can think about the leverage, <clears throat> the leverage market share for an organization like Moderna or Pfizer can negotiate much better prices with larger vendors like Cytiva than a smaller organization like BioShield can. And so by partnering with a smaller organization, we're able to negotiate better prices. And also Boston Bioproducts is able to work with us on <clears throat> you know, providing the just-in-time delivery that we wanted. And they're actually willing to also store some of the buffers short-term on their site. And that'll also free up some of our warehousing space um, for other materials. So this is a really nice working relationship that's been established <clears throat> by using vendor management strategies. Um, again, providing forecasting data, which we'll get to in a minute and just collaborating with them. We're also going to work on a press release um, where um, Boston Bioproducts <clears throat> has partnered with a North Carolina-based company. Um, it'll be good for their business and good for our business. So um, one of the other major objectives was to upfit the storage and warehousing spaces at BioShield. And so because of BioShield's rapid growth, they basically uh, ran out of their uh, storage space. And what you can see here in the bottom picture is actually the cleared out conference room that had previously been converted into a storage space for materials. And so the top two panels here just show a couple different shots of the, this is the workstation here. And you can see a laptop computer where materials were being um, inventoried in basic um, Excel workbooks. <clears throat> And basically to find materials here, you just kind of had to like walk around these different racks. There was some organizational scheme, but it wasn't robust and materials would often take a long time to find. They were hard to disposition and it was not always easy to track which program had purchased things. Things were getting mixed up, taken from other programs and so on. And so this very disorganized, decentralized storage of materials um, led to a lot of different issues. And so basically what's being shown here is all the materials that were being stored in this um, overflow conference room space were cleared out and put into a high density storage area. And the high density storage area is shown here. So um, this used to just be kind of a large empty storage space. And what had happened was we installed these um, high density shelves that are on this um, rolling platform. And so each of these wheels moves all along a mechanical pulley system these racks and they're such that if one rack bangs into the other rack all the racks move um, this is a very nice high density storage system you can see the flooring here which is anti-slip and anti-corrosive um, materials interacting so <clears throat> a very sophisticated um, high density storage space these white or clear colored bins called acro bins will be labeled and put on the shelves and then a storage system will, has being, is being put into place. This is ongoing work um, to organize all of the materials <clears throat> at BioShield um, to have a much better warehousing space on site. 
going along with reorganizing and upfitting the storage space was adding a centralized materials management tool called Instant GMP. And so I'm going to show you a couple of kind of screen grabs of how this Instant GMP software looks. Um, basically, using things like an inventory list, um, centralized materials management is supported. As I mentioned earlier, this is also a quality oversight tool and it is being used for what's called first in first out materials use and for ordering purposes. And so basically when new materials are brought on site to the warehouse, they are barcoded, they are scanned into the system and that populates the inventory management tool using our material ID number. You can see the part number here. Um, receipt number information is hyperlinked. So clicking on the receipt number will pull up something like the purchase order, as well as their certificate of analysis or certificates of conformance. Um, this will also contain expiry information for the various different materials. Um, in this case, we're specifically focused on buffers. And so you can see some various different buffers listed here as I searched. And um, you can see, again, some of these original buffers were purchased by a vendor called Cytiva. And um, <clears throat> this basically, is uh, the new tool that is being used for buffer and inventory management at uh, BioStream. One other screen grab here. So pick lists are another um, feature of this Instant GMP tool. And so I screen grabbed and wanted to talk briefly about what a pick list is. So the pick list is a program specific list. So again, before it was decentralized, now it's centralized in terms of procurement and materials management. So each program is entered into the system and that's um, assigned a pick list. And so if you were to click on, there's a couple of different programs being shown here. So here's a messenger RNA program called CH5 GP160. If we click on this link, it would take us to the list of materials that are needed to be pulled from the inventory. And that helps again to do what's referred to as materials kitting. So all the materials have to be kitted prior to being moved into the manufacturing suites. Subsequent to the kitting process is a materials quality release step where the quality team visually inspects each material to make sure it's not damaged, to make sure it's not expired, to make sure that the material matches the certificate of conformance um, or the certificate of analysis. And then um, following release, that is used to deplete the inventory in the, in the warehousing system. And so BioShield before was relying on individual project teams for this type of information. Now all this information is centralized and being managed by a software tool. And then the last part of the results section here <clears throat> were uh, the evaluation of the forecasting models. Um, as I alluded to in the data analysis section, the uh, simple exponential smoothing forecast performed the best. Um, it had the lowest error, which means that the model best, most accurately predicted the, da the data variance. And so again, as I mentioned previously, the um, mean absolute percent error was around 12% for this forecasting model. So this data was used in collaboration with um, Boston Bioproducts, the new primary vendor for buffers, to provide them with um, how many buffers we're expecting to be ordering in the subsequent months, quarters, and years. And um, this is ideal for maintaining a strong working relationship with a, with, a, with a vendor. My conclusions, so installing a vendor management system has resulted in improved vendor relationships. This reduced the prices and lead times on buffers with an average savings, as I mentioned previously, of around $14,000 per campaign. Um, this also increases transparency regarding raw materials in the buffer supply chains, which, as I mentioned earlier, is very important for um, making sure that your drug products can be rapidly um, and efficiently approved by the FDA. And this all surrounds um, safety for patients. Second, um, Instant GMP, the uh, inventory management software tool, facilitates centralized inventory management, standard workflows for materials management and ordering, and a few other things that I mentioned in the results section. The high density storage area <clears throat> provides additional on site storage and a very organized space for materials management. Um, I didn't get into too much details today, but there are other materials besides buffers that are important for manufacturing of vaccines. <laughs> And the simple exponential smoothing model best predicted the data um, where 88% of the data variance was predicted by the model. Again, the model had a 12% error rate. Using these forecasting data, we can work with the buffer vendors to um, facilitate just-in-time delivery of the buffers, 
as well as reduce total cost of goods ownership where materials are being manufactured at the right time, delivered to BioShield, um, ensuring that the expiry dates um, are not an issue for making these vaccines. And then finally, areas for future research. So as I again just mentioned, there are many more materials besides buffers important for manufacturing of any vaccine, but especially for messenger RNA vaccines. And some various <clears throat> other materials include assemblies. So um, in the manufacturing suites, there's all sorts of plumbing, tubing, bags that all have to be connected to the various different instruments um, that end up making sure that you have a sterile um, drug product at the end. Um, additionally, there are other reaction kits necessary. So um, one of the steps in manufacturing of a messenger RNA vaccine is called an in vitro transcription step. So that's the actual making of the messenger RNA strands that will go into the vaccine. The step following the manufacturing of the um, actual transcript that becomes the vaccine is an encapsulation step into what's referred to as a lipid nanoparticle. And so all of those materials could be onboarded to this system. Um, various multiple vendors could be evaluated and vendor relationships could be established for all these different materials. And then finally, the fill, finish, and vialing materials. So after you've finished making your drug product, it has to be vialed in a process that's called, referred to as fill finish. And at the very end, you end up with single use sterile vials of a vaccine that could be, excuse me, used in a clinical trial for patients. Um, <clears throat> and then here are my selected references. Um, the complete list of references can be found in my paper. Thank you.